these out of the atmosphere and everything has been originating in the west and then diving east and by the way that's going to be the same with our next system that's going to be bigger and windier than our first system but there's just snow over the past two days great news for anyone that's going to do any skiing here in the sierra we will get some snow into the Rockies. I think New Mexico with this system, first of all, how beautiful that you can see this thing spinning. Um, but I think that Taos, this area, northern New Mexico, any of these resorts, you guys are going to get just nailed with the snow um, as we head through the day today. 25 is going to be definitely treacherous. And if you are traveling, watch out. That tire traction could be reduced and the visibility with some of that blowing snow. Right now, all is very light. But our low is still, you know, really kind of getting its act together. As Jim was mentioning, that low really develops kind of down towards uh, Louisiana. But notice as we go through the, through the day, it's just going to be snowing and snowing and snowing and snowing. That does nose its way into the plains, anywhere from Kansas down into the panhandle of Texas, and then stretches into Wichita, even maybe a little bit of snow here into Arkansas. And then our system's going to be moving out of the picture for us. So how much do we still have to come? Well, we could get solid amounts here, also into Southern Colorado. Um, and we'll see a decent showing out into the plains here. You know, three to five inches, not too bad for us. Right now, it's mainly just cloud cover for us. You can even see the moon a bit still into Taos where it's 21 degrees, plenty of cold air there for the snow to come on in. Albuquerque, of course, we're a little bit farther south, lower elevation. That elevation really does make a difference once you head north of the area here. Heading out into uh, Kansas here, there's one to three, three to four. It's been pretty dry, pretty snowless, Jordan, so we'll take it. Yes, we will. Now, what we don't want to do these numbers as the days go on here. On the south side of this, it is rain, and it's going to be heavy rain for places like New Orleans. We need it though. We are two feet below average. If you look at the end of last year, technically we started a new year, but just so you know how dry it is, we are two feet below average. We're not going to make that up in this, but we are going to get a nice dousing of it. By Saturday, things clear out for us and we'll have a lovely weekend while this thing shifts along the East Coast. What's not great is there is a chance for some isolated thunderstorms that will be on the stronger side. And by the way, you could see a little flooding too here with some of these heavier downpours. So keep that in mind tomorrow if you're in this vicinity. Then we get, you know, multiple systems coming through the West that continue to not only give us lift, but also tap into this moisture. So there's the upper level energy. It's going to swing through as we head really today into tomorrow in portions of Louisiana and the Gulf Coast. And then it's going to continue to make its way northbound here this weekend. Saturday morning, it's going to be a wet one, Georgia, Tennessee into the Carolinas. And then it goes up the coast where Jim was talking about. So here's a look at the forecast tomorrow morning you'll have the showers into the afternoon even and then as this moves along the I-10 I-20 corridors it will be an overnight soaker for us into Atlanta Montgomery and then it starts to pull away and Saturday is actually going to be a lot nicer as we head later in the day and we could use this rain as things are very very dry so this two to three inches that we're going to get right over the uh, drought areas that will be much welcomed rain Jordan well, coming up ahead on this Thursday, January 4th at America's Morning Headquarters, our developing winter storm that's eyeing the east has a new and dangerous feature this morning. That's a wide swath of ice stretching more than 300 miles. Now, whether you get rain, snow or ice or maybe a little bit of each, Travel for millions is sure to be slow going this weekend. And so we have a few tips. You want to make sure, obviously, you have a full tank of gas, having a first aid kit. And I think really when it comes to a winter storm, you want to make sure you have a way to stay warm if something happens. So blankets in your car would be huge. Even gloves, make sure you have boots, the whole nine yards, and that your charger is full. Now, Jim, I'm someone where, like, the, the battery has to always be full on my phone. I'm forever charging. But a lot of people that I know will let it get down to like red and then it doesn't even phase them. They won't even plug it in at that point. Do the letters uh, I'm work like, with yes, us? Jim Cantori. No, Jen Carfagno. Oh, she also Never is a big charger well, too. Well, no, Jen, Jen, remember the gas thing? Oh, so, oh so, ask Jordan. Yesterday, I filled up my tank yesterday. I was just under uh, half a tank. See that? Steph and I are big half we tank boys. If you're doing any traveling along the I-10 corridor tomorrow, it could be stormy. There's a possibility for some stronger thunderstorms to develop anywhere from Louisiana all the way over into Florida, not to mention that we could see some flooding here as well. So let's watch it play out because tomorrow morning, the rain's still into Texas. 
It moves over into Louisiana and Little Rock into the afternoon. Notice Mississippi, which has a really bad drought, is also getting in on those showers. Alabama, Georgia, it's more of a Saturday early morning thing. And maybe when you wake up, though I guess depending on when you wake up, some people go to bed at 1 a.m. <laughs> a night thing for you, but we will see it quickly move out. That's the thing. This is a fast mover. So usually whatever you're dealing with, you're just going to have it for like half the day and then it kind of moves out. It, it's not going to be lingering, which is good. One to two inches of rain. We'll take it essentially between the I-10 and I-20 corridors is where we have it at. And if we look at the weather impacts on driving, look at wet roads. That is where most people actually have issues when it comes to driving and then of course rainfall combine those it just blows everything else away Jim so even if you do get snow a lot of times it won't stick it's been so warm that still makes the road wet so you have to exactly that here's the, I mean here's the deal simple there's another one behind this and it's a lot bigger it's a lot more intense this is just like the appetizer the pregame for what's coming next week it is going to be a huge storm you see both of our jet streams coming on in and look at the strong winds associated with this uh, system and what will happen is that it'll come through the west got a dip in our jet stream there's that cold air it's all going to start swinging eastward and as it does so it is going to be impacting us basically the entire eastern half of the country is going to be affected what this doesn't tell you and what i want you to focus in on is heavy wind the, the winds with this we could see blizzard advisories put out for it but regardless it's going to be gnarly. So this is our Monday as we go into our Tuesday. First of all, just look how expansive it is from the plains to the east, from Canada to the Gulf. There's your center of low. These white lines, tightly packed isobars, that, woo! I'm telling you, we could see several blizzard advisories with this. Could Chicago be getting hammered? Oh my gosh, this would be like an absurd storm in Chicago, in Michigan, and then as it pulls away, Indiana. And even if you don't get heavy snow, just the blowing of the snow is going to be intense. That was a European, which typically gives us a better forecast. Not always, but a lot of times we really rely heavily on the European just looking at the history of it. How about the GFS? Here's our low coming around again, still very similar. We have the very strong winds, our tightly packed isobars. This low positioning and the snow coming to Chicago might shift a little more towards northern Indiana. That's maybe where we'll have some of the heaviest snow. But regardless, Jim, both models showing very similar tracks and intensities. We got a whopper on our hands. Yeah, and I'm worried about how this impacts the Northeast. Especially the Welcome back to Pattern. Traffic, delayed flights. Overweight bags could be one day the least of your worries at San Francisco International Airport. I know everyone's like, what? Mm -hmm. Data from a new study suggests that SFO's runways are sinking. That's, not That's a big right. problem. It's a huge problem yeah. with climate change playing a huge role in the phenomenon. Mere fractions of inches each year could add up to disaster. Reporter Max Darrow from, uh, has a story from our CBS partner, KPIX. And not only the sinking, but just the rising of the water. Think about right. like Boston. Every time I fly into Boston, I'm like, I hope we make it to the runway. Yeah. And I have at that flight, you're coming in, uh -huh. you're like, water, 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 water. He's getting lower and lower. I'm like, please. Where's the runway? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that that's one of those things that it's like, okay, well, if, if, if I'm not in danger, ignorance is bliss. Yeah. I don't know if I want to know. <laughs> exactly. From stories like this, when, when I'm, I'm on a flying, plane, right? Because there's a plane, nothing we can do. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but weather wise, I don't know if you're going to want to be on the plane as I we know, can right? see some icing at the yeah. de-ice planes. Yeah. It's going to be rough, especially if you're going to be driving. Let's talk about what's going on as we head into your Saturday, guys. Yes, we have ice. Snow, that's fine. It's fun to play in, right? But no, we're going to be dealing with ice across uh, Virginia, North Carolina. We're going to see this down off towards South Carolina as well. And this is going to start to add up. Our highest confidence of about a tenth of an inch or more is right where you saw that deep purple. So when we're talking about that freezing rain, you're looking at the temperatures that are aloft, right? So we are on the warmer side, temperatures above freezing. But 
we have to go to the surface. So you have rain all the way down and then at the surface you have those temperatures below freezing. So the rain freezes on contact and that means ice. That means danger. So you do need to stay off the roadways. You are not going to win an ice. You may win a little bit if you have those snow tires and some snow, but not an ice. We can see this as we work our way in through your Saturday. All this pink that indicates the ice that we will be seeing guys. And then we start to look at a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. That's some damaging ice across yeah, the area. Yeah, that it is. Yeah. Lynette, thank you mm -hmm. so much for that. Certainly could see some power outages there, yes. so we'll keep a close eye on that. Well, shipping accounts for about 3% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. So what if there was a way to... For the latest news in climate change and sustainability, I am Steph Abrams. And I'm Felicia Coles. We want to get straight into today's hot topics. Yeah. Now, if you were tuned into social media this holiday season, you probably saw plenty of extravagant Christmas spreads. But one eco-friendly celebrity spread, spread stood out from the rest. 2.3 million pounds of wrapping paper to landfills every yeah. year. So if it can look that good. I want to know what the wrapping technique was. Right. Because I could barely wrap like just basic wrapping paper. Uh -huh. But it looks beautiful. And it first did. of all, if if she wants an all-white Christmas in her house, right. then she can have kids having Christmas ruined. I think her kids yeah. are probably okay. I mean, why well, yeah. everyone has to give their opinion on that is ridiculous. But the present, I really am curious. I wish she would do a tutorial or show yeah. us how those were wrapped. Because we could do that with old shirts. Think of all like t-shirts and materials right. that you have. We need some tips, Kim. Kim, um, send us in how you did that so we can all replicate it, please. Please. All right, hot topic number two. Have you ever heard of a reverse vending machine? Cuba no, C. But, Elliot. But it doesn't sound like I like it. <laughs> right? We I, like to get I, all I want stuff. my M&Ms, please. <laughs> okay, well, ball aluminum cups set one up for a test run at Red Rocks Amphitheater in Denver. Meanwhile, lending a helping hand. It's, it's like the little feeling of like. When you put something in there and deposit. Something, and something else comes out. It's almost like you're like winning a little something. I still just think it's fun to like stick stuff into a machine. Uh -huh. it you is know, so much and get more that fun. satisfaction instead of into a garbage. You're like, ooh, this is doing something good. Though I, I really, uh, water in an aluminum can yeah. is tough for me to drink. Uh, so I, um, it, it is well known that anyone who knows me that my water taste buds are very picky. I have Okay, Felicia's smell <laughs> and taste are so hypersensitive. She'll walk in to the newsroom and be like, does anyone else smell pickles? And we're like, what are you talking about? It's because I can't see. It's because I like literally, my eyesight is only from here so to it's here. All your... So my, all my mm -hmm. other senses are taking up for it. But I agree, water in a can isn't my vibe. Well, maybe this is your vibe. In parts of the UK, <laughs> a London-based company is working to find more sustainable ways to pull CO2 out of the air. Super and cool. the system they're using is small enough to fit into a shipping container. So Mission Zero Technology says, I mean, if, if the problem is it takes too much like electricity or whatever, then obviously uh, use renewable energy. Uh, right. I just hope that this type of stuff expands to all types of transportation. Right. You know, that we could use this, whether it's a train or a bus or a car. Right. As it's emitting, it's suck sucking it back right. out. Right. I've too, always yeah. thought, like, isn't there, like, a box or something we can put onto it that brings it into some sort of filter or capture thing? And then maybe, like, when you go to the gas station, like, you pull it off and insert it, and it takes all the junk out. And then it spits out. out a cup. <laughs> and then you Turns get a cup. Turns it into a cup. Exactly. <laughs> well, monkeys and zebras and pythons, oh, my. We are back in a pattern from zebras running rampant in California, who what? knew, to giant goldfish in the Great Lakes. The U.S. has some crazy invasive species wreaking havoc on our ecosystem. So what's up with all these animals? For that, we turn to David Mizajewski, a naturalist at the National Wildlife Federation. So we want to start with the zebras because what? They're in San Simeon, California. First of all, how did they get there? What impact do they have on the ecosystem? And how likely am I to see a zebra if I'm just like hanging out in San Simeon? <laughs> <laughs> well, the story with the zebras is that they essentially... Because there's monkeys, iguanas, pythons, all those very invasive all over the place in Florida. And many of them actually start off as pets. Mm -hmm. So how do these exotic pets get so out of hand? If you think there's just one or two out there, they actually find themselves to mate and make more? Well, Steph, it's cold. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> So I think it's helpful to just start by that. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> okay, so we're also we've got to uh, get to this one. We've got to talk about this one. Giant goldfish. They're popping up in the Great Lakes. Uh, they didn't start off giant. So what happened? I didn't know they could get this big. So I did. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but I'll let, well, I'll let Dave take it. 
Yeah, goldfish are carp. Eggs, we have frogs, uh -huh. we have several other things to talk about. Dave Mizajewski, naturalist at the National Wildlife Federation, thanks for joining us today. I knew that goldfish could get big as, as their environment because that was one of my science fair projects in elementary school. You put the goldfish in bigger tanks and see which one gets bigger and they really do get bigger. Well, I hope that you didn't release them into the wild like that. This is all Felicia's fault. They probably died, I'm <laughs> guessing, based on me. For more stories like this. Felicia and Stephanie. Yeah. Oh, pattern. <laughs> So back into pattern today is National Trivia Day, and you might not know this, but we get pretty competitive here at the Weather Channel. So we invited our friends from Weather Underground to join us in some it's climate yeah. trivia. Yeah. So Felicia and I are going to face off against uh. Alex Wilson and Mike Bettis, and Dr. Rick Nav here is uh, going to be our MC for this. You know, I've learned so much by watching pattern and you embarrass yourself you a lot. Yes, okay. you can. That's the goal. A little, yeah. edu yeah. a little edutainment today. <laughs> Here are the rules. Okay, one person from each team will come forward. And accuracy. Okay. A little okay. fisticuffs maybe here? We'll see. Uh, yeah. okay. Yes, we will fight. We're on the same right. team today. Okay. We'll fight. We'll we'll fight. Oh, you <laughs> Number one You're is multiple today. choice. Okay. How much have global average temperatures risen in the last century? One, two, three, or four degrees Celsius. B. Two. Let's reveal the answer. It is one oh. degree Celsius. Do we get a point because they got it wrong? No. No. We don't. no. no. No points. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to guess. Question up, that's a weather underground game rule that we use sometimes <laughs> yeah. on uh, Hurricane Hotline. Okay, second question. This is also multiple choice. What state has the highest energy-related carbon emissions per capita? Weather underground. Uh, Texas. Let's see the answer. It is not Texas. Uh, it is Wyoming. Per capita. Per capita, the key capita. being. They got too many. They got too many people. They got they too many people in Texas. Many, yeah. Wyoming needs more capita. Okay. Yeah. All right, question number no, three. Yeah, True or no false? What. True or false? Carbon dioxide is the most potent. False. False. That is Meth correct. Methane. Is that Nitrogen the answer? Oxide. Methane? It is the what? If I guess it, I don't right? want to give it away. You might yes, want to guess it. Yes, methane is correct, I believe. Me and Mike are very familiar with methane. It's sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur hexafluoride. I've actually never heard of that. Duh. Obviously. All right, question number four. True or false? The rainforest is the planet's... You guys are slow over there, just saying. They're not even speaking. Sometimes it's better to be fast than right. Should we true? Yeah. Should we true? Yeah. We're true in this? Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna okay. True. Is the rainforest the planet's largest carbon sink? Unfortunately, that is false. Yeah, that's it's the ocean. Uh, the ocean. Yeah. The ocean. It's all right. We're winning one to Again, nothing. Again, sometimes it's... Questions. This one on multiple choice. Which country is the biggest <laughs> carbon emitter? U.S., China, India, or Brazil? Oh. Steph? China or India? Oh. Which one do I go with? Can we steal it? Okay, we're trying uh, China. You guys put up the answer before the answer. Well, no, I want to take Steph's side. Thank China. China. Yeah, you Dr. Knew that Nav, one. are you taking their side? I'm yeah. trying to be I'm Dr. trying Nav. to be impartial. Dr. Nav. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is a fair win. We, think that All right. we had something. <laughs> I'll, we'll think about doing a review on that one. All right. okay. This one multiple choice. Day. What industry contributes the most to global carbon emissions? Oh, I know B. this too. What industry? What industry? Industry. Industry. B. Yes. B. Agriculture. B. It is not agriculture. Can we steal? Agriculture. No, can we steal? No. It is yeah. energy. Oh. The energy production industry. Well, Coal and so forth. You guys need to watch Pattern more often. Okay. We let's do. go to the next question. <laughs> we do. Okay. This one's also multiple Man. choice. Which state was the first to produce mandatory climate change curriculum? Which California, uh, Oregon, New ooh. York, New Jersey. Oh. It's either California or New York. Or was it Oregon? California. I think it's do, California. Do, 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 do. No. But Oregon sounds think. familiar. But we interviewed somebody. I think it's New Jersey. Okay, New Jersey. we need to find New Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey. New Jersey's correct. Yes. Oh. yes. We interviewed somebody. That's the reason. All right, we got time for one more question. Okay. okay. Which state has the most solar panels? I didn't Weather think Underground so. says. I'm no. Which no? southern okay. state? California, Arizona, Texas, or Florida? All right, we're going to go with Texas. Texas is not correct. No, it's California. But you said that you go, no, that's okay. not right. He said, he said do, what do southern this. state? Oh. 
Southern. They're California's all Southern. West Coast state. Why is Nat doing us so dirty today? You, all right. We, we have a tie. So this is a tiebreaker sure. question. Which right is the most right. polluted <laughs> item in the world? <laughs> Plastic bottles, receipts, straws, or cigarette butts? Need to answer go, now. Go, go. Hey, hey. No, it's cigarette bottles. No, it's cigarette butts. What does that mean? Takes the cigarette butt and you know what the most polluted item is? Your mouth. Oh! <laughs> we'll see you in a couple minutes. We beat 